Hey everyone, it's Wednesday and we're excited to spend a little time with you on this Wednesday evening. And uh, we're going to be sharing out of a scripture out of 1 Timothy chapter 3 in just a little bit. We're waiting on some friends to drop by and join us now. But uh, we're going to be talking about an old song and an ageless gospel. And so we will uh, jump into 1 Timothy chapter 3 in a few moments. But first, some hellos. I see some of our friends are arriving. Hello, Jana. Good evening to you and Gary and Susie. Blessings, waves to you as well. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And Bill and Mary Lou, how we love you guys too. Blessings, happy Wednesday evening. This is your Wednesday night church, folks. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Welcome into our kitchen. Oh, there was a bunch of us around this table oh, just five minutes ago. It was kind and of we got cleared wild it, in here. got set up, and now we're going to spend some time with you. <laughs> we're like, everybody out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Donna, bless you and Randy and Pastor Doc and Miss June. Blessings to all of you. Hugs for you all from a distance. Yes. Hey, Jason. Hi. Yeah. Hi. I bet you're a smiling papa, huh? He's got a new yes. new little daughter. How precious she is. And we celebrate yes. with you and Anna. Yes, indeed. Happy little family. Yeah. Glad to have you all on there. Hope you have your communion elements. We'll be taking communion together in just a little while. So, Hello, Sarah. Um, Blessings to you. Even if you don't have the traditional um, juice and... Uh, unleavened bread you can mm-hmm. choose other things to be symbolic of the elements and join I with us saw sarah's name there it made me remember the first mission trip that she went on that she and i went on mm-hmm. together uh, to the ukraine and we had a time there mm-hmm. and we ate lots of borsk <laughs> which is soup and potatoes over there That's and uh, right. that was the staple Hey, Deborah, Virginia, blessings to you. And it's tiny. Is that, no, no, it's Virginia. Okay, wrong But what a uh, wonderful trip it was. Yeah, you and Sarah had several mission trips. She's our babushka. Yes, (laughs) yes, and our granddaughter is wanting to be a missionary in the footprints of her grandmommy. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Hey, Deborah. Let's see you. Well, we'll um, get started here in just a moment. We encourage you to hit the share button anytime during the broadcast or at the end of the broadcast, and uh, so some other people can catch this devotion and maybe hey, share. Hey, Heath, how are you? Good to see us. you. Blessings to you and Haley. Well, tonight we want to talk to you about an old song and an ageless gospel. What am I talking about? Well, in First Timothy chapter three. We'll read it in just a moment, but there's a passage of Scripture uh, that many uh, biblical historians and commentators and expositors uh, believe to um, very probably have been one of the early hymns. Historians and... I'm hearing myself repeat myself. (laughs) I'm trying to be a good (laughs) sharer here and share the video, but it's talking to me, so... uh, Okay. Anyway. Go ahead. <laughs> there's a passage in First Timothy chapter 3 that, that many commentators and so forth, they believe that it was an, a hymn in the early church because of uh, the poetic structure, the rhythmic sound. And uh, it's, it's beautiful. And Paul is uh, instructing Timothy, a, a young pastor, uh, a son in the ministry, if you will, there in Ephesus where Timothy ministered. And, uh, you know, in a lot of his writings in First and Second Timothy, Timothy's teachings important. He's telling them what the people believe matters. And in this, what I believe also probably was a hymn in the early church that was became so well known. Paul employed it in Scripture under the leadership of the Holy mm-hmm. Spirit, of course. And it contained some of the bedrock beliefs of the early church. So, um First Timothy chapter 3, and Mick, if you'll read um, verses 14 through the end of that chapter. These things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly, but if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness." 
God God was manifested in the flesh. Yeah, this is she's about to read now the the part that was may have been aware, like if I said amazing grace how sweet the mm-hmm. sound the stand the yeah, yeah okay you would you would know the rest of it the saved mm-hmm. a wretch like me well this is probably a song in the early church that they were very familiar with and it's the mystery of godliness and followed by some bedrock beliefs okay God was manifested in the flesh justified in the spirit seen by angels preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. So there you have it. Uh, If not a song, then certainly part of a catechism or, uh, uh, you know, a memorized way of presenting uh, truths that were deeply mattered to them. Because Paul just mentioned earlier in this passage mm-hmm. about uh, talking about the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth and without controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. Notice that without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. And then boom, 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 boom. You see these uh, these things that follow. And... Um, some of them don't follow on, but my, my other page is, oh, here it is. They've stuck together. <laughs> Hang with us tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they follow the, the six statements. And so we're going to just spend a few minutes here as we prepare for communion, because these are things that were heralded by the early church and the day's church. Do, we do not need to forget the importance of these. And sometimes, uh, I'll just be honest with you, sometimes when people hear uh, the word doctrine or Bible study or, you know, you need to know the truths of the Scripture. Huh. That can be a little ho-hum, boring, or yoni uh, because, you know, it's not the next new thing. Well, listen, the next new thing's not going to save you, friend. It's an old gospel. The faith once delivered for the saints that were to contend for, Jude says. Right here, the, 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 it's without controversy, the, the mystery of godliness. And sometimes I fear that in today's church, even some of, uh, you know, we're so schooled that we don't need to use these, uh, you know, theological terms or these words, but they stand for something. Like we use the word incarnation. Mm-hmm which we'll see here in just a moment, what that represents is beautiful and very, very meaningful. So, you know, we're willing to learn and embrace and engage new ways of doing things. We didn't know what a Google was uh, not not that long ago or an iPhone was or Facebook or Shopify or eBay or Amazon. Mm-hmm. You know, Amazon was a jungle down in, in South America. Now it's that, that it's got a totally different meaning. And we adjust and we learn and we articulate and communicate with the, all the new newfangled things. But, dear friend, we need to know. Uh, and I'm, I'm not even going to say the old-fashioned gospel. I'm talking about the ageless gospel. It hasn't changed. What saves people hasn't changed. And what we need to know that, that there are core truths of Christianity they have not changed. And if somebody's a changing them on you, there might be a problem. There is a problem. <laughs> Just to say in. So the first uh, thing we want to talk about is is the incarnation. And we have talked about this on our uh, daily study, but where it says God was manifested in the flesh. Yes, the mystery of godliness. What is the mystery? God was manifested in the flesh. So he became the, the Son of God. He was the Son of God, manifesting God as the Son. Yeah. So... Uh, he, that's how he manifested in the flesh. God took on human mm-hmm. form. Mm-hmm. And I like the way of saying that, that. The Son of God manifested God the Son. As we've been teaching in our study about who Jesus is, his pre-incarnate existence, he's eternal. There, And you have this whole body of truth concerning him that was prior to his incarnation. What we mean by incarnation is he came and dwelt in a human body, robed himself with human flesh, incarnate. And uh, that's uh, this mystery of godliness that God, a very God, became a man. Yes, God, a very God, man, a very man. Jesus, the Christ, the Son of the living God, the eternal Son of the Godhead who became a, a man in human flesh. 
and not and without compromising either. So actually, the word incarnate break that down for us in flesh, literally. So we in human flesh, and when I don't mean flesh in sinful flesh, right? A lot of times when in, in biblical terms we talk about oh, that's just flesh. We're talking That's about the carnal. natural fallen nature. Right. You can hear that word carnal. Yeah, you know, like when you go order meat in Spanish, it's carne, you know. Mm-hmm. It is, uh, it's the same. In, so we're, but we're not talking about sinful. Here yes, we're talking yes. about God came yes. in human, in humanity, in human, 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 a natural human body. So he came as a man yeah. to bear the sins of mankind. Yes. And that's the incarnation, and we see yeah. that here in this scripture. And we're st- like we were studying in day- today's devotion about the apostleship of Jesus. In the fullness of the time, we talked about God sent mm-hmm. forth his son. That's the initiation of apostolic ministry there. God sent that word apostello. God sent his son. Mm-hmm. And so he's our apostle, but he sent him into the world, robed him with human flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary, and he lived as a man, full of the Holy Spirit, as Adam was ordained and created to do originally. Well, the second thing that we see in this scripture is the resurrection, not only the incarnation, but the resurrection. Yes, and I do believe, uh, and from my study of this, uh, other Bible scholars would uh, pretty much in agreement that when it says justified in the spirit he 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 was manifested in the flesh justified in the spirit they can have a wide range but the idea of even though he was a human being the holy spirit uh, uh verified confirmed justified his not only his ministry you know like with the miraculous and everything as we talked about the other day but the resurrection was the ultimate mm-hmm. uh, justification. And Paul mentions this uh, some in uh, the book of Romans about the power of the resurrection and justification. Is that I, I like to think of it this way, that the resurrection is God's amen to the message of the cross. It confirmed that what Jesus did on the cross was redemptive and that he conquered death. How do we know? Because we believe in our heart, God raised him from the dead. The, the Holy Spirit came into that tomb and energized him. He was given a new glorified, resurrected body that he appeared for, for a period of 40 days after his resurrection. And so, they again, I believe this couples with what's already been said. He manifests in the flesh, justified by the Spirit, even though he's a man. The, the Holy Spirit credentialed who he was and ultimately the resurrection uh, showed that he he conquered death. You know, it's the Sunday morning victory that was shouted mm-hmm. over what appeared to be a Friday afternoon defeat. That's and right. the resurrection that is, is power. If he had not raised from the dead, we would not know that death had been conquered. And if death had not been conquered, then the penalty of sin still left its sting. But he removed it by raising, yeah. being raised from the dead. Which also gives us the hope of being resurrected. Yes. Because we're, we're taught through Scripture that we will, if these bodies die before Christ comes back, that they will be resurrected uh, on that great, as we call it, that great uh, day that's coming. Great getting up morning. Great getting up morning. Amen. And the next thing that, that he mentions here is that he was seen by angels. So he was witnessed by angels. Uh, he robed himself in human flesh, the Holy Spirit operating in through around about and you know mm-hmm. for by him, seen witnessed by angels, and they're showing up everywhere. They show up uh, uh, to, in Mary's house mm-hmm. to announce, "Hey, you're going to be impregnated by the Holy Spirit. You're going to carry a child by the Holy Spirit." You know, and he should call his name Jesus. They show up at his birth to the shepherds in the fields. They show up at his baptism, you know, uh, after his baptism and he goes into the wilderness and is mm-hmm. tempted. They come to him and they minister to him. They, uh, they show up in Gethsemane when he's praying and agonizing prior to going to the cross. They show up on resurrection morning. They're there at the tomb when the women come. That They're there when he ascends into glory. The angels are there and speak to the disciples, you know, mm-hmm. as they're staring into the heaven. Angelic ministry surrounded him. And that was 
uh, that was something that was talked about a lot in the early church, and some folks got off with it some. And, and if you look at the writer of Hebrews, he spends quite some time showing the superiority of Jesus to angels. Uh, but he does, but he does address it. Said angels are sent to minister to us as heirs of salvation. Now, as Christ lives in us. And so the Bible has a whole lot to say about angels, the ministry of angels, the appearance of angels. And, and how to and keep so that in the proper order. Yeah, and in the early church, he was manifested in the flesh, justified by the Spirit, seen by angels. You know, uh, again, this he Jesus was a man manifested, but he was more than a man, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. We also see in this scripture uh, the idea of the gospels reaching the nations. Yeah, uh, believed has preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world. Yes, and, and so the first part of that about uh, preached on to the uh, Gentiles shows us it's a it's a gospel for the nations because. Early on, Jesus' ministry was the household of Israel. Came to the Jewish and He ministered to a few other people along the way, you know, like the Syrophoenician woman and uh, who came that seeking healing and said, well, even the dolls get the crumbs, you know, and so forth. There were times we see that. But uh, in the early church, the revelation came to Peter on a, on a rooftop and the doors were blown off uh, that were holding back the gospel going to the Gentiles. And this now in, is Paul's writing later. And remember, Paul had a, a special calling and anointing uh, to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. If you read uh, in the book of Acts, uh, Ananias told him, you're going to be a, you're going to minister to the household of Israel and to the Gentiles. I mean, uh, he 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 was one of the one that led the way through the door to the nations. And we see Antioch mm -hmm. sending uh, he and Barnabas out on um, on missionary assignments. Uh, so this is this was big in the early church. He was preached to the Gentiles. It had moved beyond Judaism. It wasn't just a Christianity. Wasn't just a sect of Judaism. Mm -hmm. It had. It was a gospel for the world, the Gentiles, for the nations. Amen. And that's us, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. So we are so grateful for that. And that's the reason we need to have a heart for the nations and be involved in seeing the gospel. Yeah go to the nations and I, uh, I, I, I in this period I'm missing Getting you know being able to travel in that way you know I, and sometimes I find myself this journey and I want to see my friends in South Korea or I want to I want, I want to visit my family down in Grenada or and then this last couple of years particularly through Mark and Robin's ministry I, I miss my friends and brothers and sisters in Guatemala and 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 so forth uh, and then other places but you you have heart attachments, but just to know that this gospel is going to the nations and uh, is being preached to the nations now is awesome. And that leads us to the to the, net, to the second part of that. It's the harvest of yeah, souls. Preached to the Gentiles, believed on, believed on, in believed the world. on in the world. So we're talking about the harvest of souls in the earth, and you see it right here in the mm -hmm. scripture which we're talking about was most likely an old song or catechism of some sort. Yes. But there's that idea of we're in the greatest season, actually, of harvest that has ever happened yeah, right in now. the history of the church. Right more, now. Right now. On planet Earth. More, more people Game are being on. <laughs> saved than any other time. We're living in a great harvest. You may not see it in America as much as yeah. it's being seen in many, many places. Or as much in Western culture, right. you know, Europe and here. But yeah. my goodness, in Africa yeah. and in Asia and in South America mm -hmm. and Central America, I'm telling you, the, the fire of God is burning in hearts and the evangelists are being raised up and sent to the nations from the nations mm -hmm. now. And think of it. When that little teenage girl was visited by the angel Gabriel and said, you know, the Holy Spirit, and to see her child grow up and then watch him die on a cross. Mm -hmm. But because of that, to know now his name is revered, honored, and worshipped among all the nations, not just a little hamlet in Nowheresville where he was born in Bethlehem or a little village on the outskirts of anything much known called Nazareth, that little boy grew up to became, who was the God-man who took on human flesh and died a redemptive death. 
conquered death, was raised from the dead, now is seated in the heavenlies and interceding and watching and sending those angels on assignment and calling sons and daughters to, uh, to, into ministry and calling all of us to be a part of this harvest. And just to see that story, how could that get old? It's an ageless gospel, but it's the, it's the greatest message still for mankind today. And that brings us to the last thing. Which is the ascension. We see that, that last phrase, received up in glory. So it's talking about God was manifested in the flesh. Uh, and it goes through this list and said, received up in glory. So here we see the ascension. Uh, this was the end of the earthly incarnate ministry of Jesus. Yes, and the ushering in of a new era where he would be seated at the right hand of God the Father, ever living to make intercession for us, but seated there ruling and reigning uh, from the heavens, if you will, uh, uh, ruling and reigning over his kingdom that continues to expand in the realm of earth. And we obviously, when this passage was formed, if, whether it was a song or mm -hmm. a catechismic training or whatever it was, the early church had developed and grown enough and were around the curve far enough that they're putting all this together. He was manifest, manifested in the flesh, justified by the Spirit, seen of angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory, the ascension. And uh, th that's the story. That's a good gospel in a nutshell that's right there. That's the story. <laughs> He's been received into heaven and... and, and then Maranatha, he's coming again. You know, you want to maybe put a couple other things on there, but mm -hmm. this is beautiful, and I, I just love it. It's like Paul is saying, you know, grounded in the pillar of truth, and great is the, uh, you know, the, the, the Mr. Godly, there's no controversy. He was manifested in the flesh, justified by the Spirit, seen by angels, uh, preached to the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. And it's just like, it's, it's almost like it's written like the people would be aware of that, you know, and, and they're just, yes, amen, 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 amen. Shouting stuff yeah, right there. Yeah. <laughs> so, an old song and an ageless gospel. So, we were bringing you that from 1 Timothy. Uh, chapter 3, verses 14 through the end of that chapter. And if you want to look at those last few verses, if you just logged in a little later with us today, you'll see that section of Scripture that was that we were talking about was written yeah. perhaps as an old hymn of sorts. And just beautiful truths inside there. And so jump into 1 Timothy 3. You will get a lot of good stuff out of that. Yes, yes. Bible is rich. And we're reminded again of some of the bedrock teachings and beliefs of the early church, yes. you know. And so it might be good to, you know, make sure our children know what the incarnation is and the ascension is and mm -hmm. and uh, what's that mean, the Gentiles, and believed on in the world, How where does where, where all this fit? Seen by angels, you know, and we're living in a time when people want to teach uh you don't believe in stuff like angels. You don't believe in stuff like demons, and and some people uh, have turned the 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 gospel of, of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus that we're to be preaching. They've excised some of that and made it more of a social gospel of just helping people. And God help us to help people. Mm -hmm. But church, the gospel is how Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, was buried, and on the third day was raised from the dead according to the scriptures. That's what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15. And that gospel was preached to the Gentiles and believed on in the world, and it needs to be preached in our world today. It does. Amen. So preach it, share it. Amen. Well, let's honor the one because it is the let me add this maybe it's the power of God into salvation. You know? Yes, so. the God, yes, Amen. So we want to honor the one that I believe this song was sung to or sung about, you know, and that's our Lord Jesus. And He said, as often as we do this, we're to do it in remembrance of Him. So all hearts and minds own Jesus now to honor Him, to reverence Him, to worship Him. 
And Lord Jesus, as we hold this bread in our hand tonight, we're so grateful that you came and took upon yourself human flesh and lived life as a man sinlessly. And you died on that cross bearing our sins. A man who died for all men and women. We're so honored and humbled by that, Lord Jesus, that you, not only the Son of God, but God the Son, the maker of the universe, would humble yourself and become obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, as God has highly exalted you, we highly exalt you tonight. Mm -hmm. We declare you are the Lord of lords. You are the King of kings, Jesus. Thank you so much for your body given for us on that cross. We remember you. Would you honor him by eating the bread now? Amen. Would you take the cup in your hand? Lord Jesus, as we hold this cup, We remember the cup of suffering that you drank for us. Lord, how you took our sins into your own body and how you shed your precious blood for us. We just want to pause and thank you. Honor your sacrifice. Honor the power of your blood. Thank you for redeeming us unto yourself. um, Making us allowing us to become right with our Father through your sacrifice and your blood. We thank you for the power of your blood. We thank you for its power to save and and to heal and deliver and all the wonderful things that come to us through the power of your blood. So we honor you, Lord Jesus, and we remember you as we drink this cup together and drink the cup. Amen. We are honored that you would spend this time with us this evening. And I just want to say to you, no matter what you may be facing or what you're having to deal with in your world, your daily life right now, know, believer, that the Lord is with you. And uh, he invites you to come into his throne room to receive grace and mercy in your time of need. Know that nothing can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. You are loved. You are loved. If there are those who may not know Jesus Christ personally, I encourage you to seek the scriptures out because they testify of him. He did die on that cross, bore your sin. He was buried. And on the third day, God indeed did raise him from the dead. And he's coming back someday. Believe that with all my heart. That is the testimony of my life and hundreds of millions of others who came before us and many that are watching now. And he will become uh, your savior. He's already done it, but you have to believe in him and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Call on him. The Bible says you'll be saved. So we invite you to do that tonight. And uh, I just ask, Father, that you would bless each person who's uh, viewing this right now. You know the needs in their life. Lord, I thank you as we uh, learned about you tonight. Because you did take on human flesh, it says that you are not unfamiliar with what we face that you were tempted in all points, yet you never failed, Uh, that you uh, know our infirmities and our weaknesses. And thank you for that, Lord. I pray that you would just manifest yourself to each person now and their point of need, that their hearts would just be open by faith to receive what you desire to do in them, for them, or through them. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
Thanks for being with us tonight. We'll see you again in the morning at 10. Yeah, and we'll finish up our teaching on the uh, the apostleship of Jesus, or uh, Jesus as an apostle, because we're studying about who Jesus is, and the New Testament tells us Mm -hmm. he is the chief apostle. Uh, And so that's important. It's been a great study. Get your notebook, your notes, and we studied this morning how Daniel prophesied hundreds of years before Mm -hmm. the coming of Christ. When he would come in Daniel 70 weeks. And that's really fascinating. And um, we'll be looking at some other other scripture tomorrow. And we want you we want to learn more and more about who Jesus is. Right. Amen. Thanks for being with us. Yes. See you tomorrow. God bless each and every one of you, and we love you.